Hi, this is Dan Howard, and I'd like to talk a moment about reading your mold results um, from EnviroSpec for Western Pennsylvania. Um, and, and we have a video that explains and shows how we take the air test using an air pump and an aerosol cassette or a swab. Um, and what happens after that is this, this cassette, which pools a fixed amount of air in the case of the aerosols, uh, 10 liters a minute for 10 minutes or 100 liters of air across the slide. It goes to the lab. After we do a chain of custody, it's a document that says this particular cassette with this particular number is what was taken in this area. It goes to the lab. This is a slide. It has sticky stuff on it and the opening is designed to splatter the uh, mold spores across that slide. And Think of it as if we had red balls, blue balls, and green balls, and those represent each one of several different types of mold, and we throw them randomly into a room. Now, we may not want to count all of the balls in a room, just like we can't count every little speck of mold in a home. But if we take what's on half the floor and multiply it times two, we can pretty reasonably get an get a order of magnitude with a fair degree of reliability of what types of balls are in that room and how many of them. So if we have half the room and we have 10 red balls, we know that we probably, and let's say they're aspergillus, and we know that the room probably has 20 of them. And that's how we extrapolate from the data that comes off the slide to tell us how much of which types of molds are there. On the typical slide, think of it like the balls being spread across the glass and seen through the electron microscope and then identified and counted. However, if your mold report comes back that molds are present, what happened was the slide was overloaded. Picture instead of counting the, the, the single layer of mold across the floor or the balls across the floor, we have one of those things that uh, they show at the carnivals or you have over for the kids where there's a, thousands of balls and they jump in the little plastic blow-off thing. And if you think like this, and we're looking at a slide and it's stacked with mold, well, we can't count them. And then at that point, it's what's called overloaded and your report will say present. Just to kind of get an order of magnitude what that what is needed. We get concerned health-wise at most molds if there's 2,000 spores per cubic meter, 2,000. If it's any of the bad molds, we get real concerned if there's any of them. The number it takes to get to this point is about 125,000 to 150,000 spores per cubic meter. So the bottom line is, if you get a reading from a particular area that says present and it's a, that it's overloaded, that area really needs remediated. What we really need to know is what types of mold. One limiting problem when we're reading those results. Think of the, uh, uh, the bad molds which by and large produce very few spores as compared to the ones that give us asthma and respiratory issues. Think of them like lead balls in this plastic bin. They tend to fall to the bottom and they tend to be very difficult to read. So even if we have a listing that does not have a wet mold and it doesn't mean there isn't one present in the place, so still in our remediation we need to accommodate that thought or taking care of the environment that may create that to do, to, to, to grow and, and change it. Once we get your lab results, you'll read them from the type and the amount of the mold. We'll do an assessment of what needs to happen next, next hopefully nothing, um, and uh, the type of action it needs to do two things. One, to clean the problem up, remove the mold, which is the remediation. But we also want to abate the conditions, or in other words, with just run an experiment in that house, that home, that business, and it says that the conditions, the way they are now, will sustain the growth of mold. If we went in and cleaned everything up and don't change the conditions in the building, whether it be reducing leaks, reducing moisture, changing how things are, are operated, changing airflow, putting negative pressure in, um, any one of those things, if we don't change those conditions, no matter how well we scrub, no matter how well they disinfect, no matter how well they clean, you'll get mold back because we've already run the experiment and that building will sustain the growth of mold. Think like this table were dirty, we wipe it. A week from now, if we do the same things that made it dirty, it'll be dirty again. So, in summary, 
when you get your report from Envirospect of Western Pennsylvania, it'll give you an idea of how many and what type of mold is in the area and what we need to do about it. Dan Howard for Envirospect of Western Pennsylvania. I look forward to serving your needs. Thanks a lot.